Hi guys, welcome to Chemistry A-Level AQA. Today we're talking about ozone and the damage that gets caused to it by CFCs. So the first question to answer is what is a CFC? Well, the CFC stands for chlorofluorocarbon. And what's unusual here is that we don't use CL for chlorine in the abbreviation. We use a C. So that first C stands for chlorine. Now, a CFC is made of carbon-fluorine bonds and carbon-chlorine bonds. The carbon-chlorine bonds are actually quite reactive. They have a low bond enthalpy and they can be broken in the upper regions of the atmosphere by ultraviolet light. The carbon-fluorine bonds, however, are very strong and these have a high bond enthalpy and they're not broken by UV light. So the major problem is highlighted here in green, the carbon-chlorine bond. Now, CFCs are also quite dense and heavy, and they sink in air, which makes us ask the question, how do they get into the upper atmosphere? Well, it takes some time. It takes 20 or 30 years, and some of them are still traveling up there. Um, they're moved by pressure gradients, by the mixing of air and the normal winds. So CFCs have high inertness. What does this mean? Well, if you're inert, you don't react. And CFCs aren't very reactive, especially in the lower atmosphere where there isn't a high concentration of UV light. CFCs are also non-toxic. What does this mean? Well, this means they're safe. If you had some CFCs in the room with you right now, it's not toxic. They're not going to damage you. CFCs are non-flammable. What does this mean? Well, this means that they're not a fire risk. So they're not going to catch a light. If I use them in a spray can or the back of a fridge, it's not going to catch on fire. So these three properties of CFCs are the reasons we use them in the following products. Coolants in the back of fridges that carried the heat away. Solvents in dry cleaning for dissolving polar stains and polar molecules. Propellants in aerosols. So these are all really good uses of CFCs. Unfortunately, 20 or 30 years after CFCs were in regular use, scientists realized that they were damaging the ozone layer. Well, what is the ozone layer? Ozone has the formula O3, and it forms a layer in the upper atmosphere that absorbs most of the harmful UV radiation that comes from the sun. It does let through some UVA, and it lets through a tiny bit of UVB, about 5% of all the UVB that reaches us from the sun, and it blocks all of UVC. Now, for the AQA spec, you just need to know that the ozone layer absorbs harmful UV radiation. Now, in the mid-1980s, it was discovered that there was a huge ozone depletion over the Antarctica and that a lot of harmful UV radiation was getting through. So in 1987, the Montreal Protocol was formed, and this was to reduce the use of CFCs and to introduce a non-damaging substance which we will learn about soon. But first of all, let's look at how CFCs cause damage to the ozone layer. So here I have a chlorine molecule. When UV light hits it, it can be split, while the bond can be broken by homolytic fission, in which one unpaired electron goes to each of the chlorine atoms, forming two chlorine free radicals. And down below, we can see a chlorofluorocarbon, um, which is being turned into two free radicals as well. And the carbon-chlorine bond is the weakness here. The UV light that's absorbed into that bond splits it into the two free ra radicals. These half arrows show the movement of an unpaired electron. Now, free radicals are highly reactive. And it's this fact that damages the ozone layer. So these CFCs move via the wind, via the mixing of air, just the natural mixing of air. These CFCs take many years, but they move up into the upper regions of the atmosphere where there is more ultraviolet radiation, less has been absorbed at that stage. And there's enough ultraviolet radiation up there to break the carbon chlorine bond. There isn't enough radiation down at the level we're on at the ground level to break the carbon chlorine bond, but there is in the upper regions of the atmosphere. That forms the free radicals, which then attack the ozone layer. So, chlorine free radicals breaking down the ozone layer. 
Here we have one of the chlorine free radicals formed in the upper region attacking a molecule of ozone with the formula O3 and forming a free radical ClO with the unpaired electron and an oxygen molecule. Now this free radical formed in the first step goes on to attack another ozone molecule. So a second ozone molecule is broken down, forming two more oxygen molecules and reforming the chlorine free radical that was used in the first step. So these two steps are propagation. We can see how really one chlorine free radical in just one of its actions, it can break down two ozone molecules and be reformed, ready to go again. So in this way, one chlorine free radical could break down millions of molecules of ozone given enough time. Therefore, each chlorine free radical breaks down two ozone molecules into three oxygens, as we can see here. Okay, moving on, we're now going to look at the replacement for the CFCs. And this was hydrofluorocarbons. They also are inert at ground level, but as they contain no chlorine atoms and so do not have carbon-chlorine bonds, even in the upper regions of the atmosphere, there are no carbon-chlorine bonds to break. And as said before, the carbon-fluorine bond is too strong to break. So this way they do not form chlorine free radicals and using these in fridges and dry cleaning and solvents and propellants has gone some way to repairing the damage done to the ozone layer. However, the replacement of CFCs with hydrofluorocarbons hasn't all been good news. Hydrofluorocarbons, it now turns out, are actually incredibly strong greenhouse gases. They absorb thousands of times more infrared radiation than a carbon dioxide molecule. They're actually extreme, extreme contributors to global warming. So this has now posed another environmental challenge. Okay, let's look at this first question. State why the ozone layer is beneficial to living organisms. Well, the ozone layer protects us from the harmful ultraviolet radiation, and it does this by absorbing UV radiation, and that will get you full marks in your answer. Okay, so state how CFCs form chlorine atoms in the upper atmosphere. Well, we know that the carbon-chlorine bond gets hit and absorbs ultraviolet radiation, and it splits by homolytic fission. Now part C here says give the equations to show how chlorine atoms catalyze the decomposition of ozone. Well these are the two equations we looked at earlier in the presentation and this is really the chlorine radical breaking down the ozone to form a free radical and an oxygen molecule and then the free radical from the first propagation reaction circled here in red goes on to react with a second ozone molecule breaking it down to form, reform the chlorine free radical and two more oxygens. Therefore, we get two ozone molecules broken down. You need to learn those equations off by heart. Okay, so in this uh, next question, we're just looking for the two propagation steps. And a chlorine free radical is going to steal a hydrogen from this molecule, uh, forming HCl and leaving behind a free radical. And in the second step, that very same free radical is going to react again to reform the chlorine free radical. And these are propagation reactions. Okay, let's move on to the next question. So here we have a multiple choice question. Which statement is not correct about ozone? A, it absorbs harmful ultraviolet radiation in the upper atmosphere. Well, that is correct. As we've just explained, that's what it does. It decomposes to form oxygen, part C. Um, yeah, it does decompose ozone to form oxygen. We know that from this reaction. And then part D, ozone holes are regions of the upper atmosphere where there is reduced concentration of ozone. Well, we know that the ozone is being broken down and decomposing, which obviously means there's a reduced concentration. So the answer here is B. Its decomposition is catalyzed by chlorine molecules. What's the incorrect part of this statement? 
and it's the word molecules. It's chlorine atoms or free radicals that break down ozone, not molecules. Okay, guys, I hope that's been helpful and you've learned something about ozone. And if you like, hit the like, that'd be nice. Subscribe and check out some more videos. Thank you.